All right. There's a second kind of bullet I'd like to create, which is called a homing bullet, where I'm just going to have a plane that flies down the screen. He fires things at me, but I can dodge out of the way. So initially they go towards me, but they don't follow me continuously, because that would be very hard to dodge. So I'm going to create a second plane, so a new sprite. Um, enemy 2 underscore s. Oh, let's see. Maybe this guy. Erase the color out of him. Center him. Hooray! New sprite. He's going to have some sort of projectile. I'm going to call it homing. He's going to take maybe this thing. That looks like it might be a homing bullet. I'm going to erase a color out of that and center that. OK. These both need objects. So I'm going to create my enemy to object with the sprite I just made. And I'm going to create the homing object with that sprite I just made. Enemy 2 is going to be a little simpler. He's going to fire constantly, but he's just going to go down the screen for movement. So when he's first created, he's just going to move down the screen at some maybe speed of 2 or something. And he's going to do a similar trick with the alarm events that the other guy did. I'm going to set an alarm. Um, maybe I'll have him do every two seconds, so 60 steps. So that sets it the first time in the create event. When the alarm goes off, notice that I can use alarm zero in both objects. Each object gets its own set of alarms, so I don't need to worry about using alarm zero in two different objects. All right, so when alarm zero goes off, I'm going to reset this back to 60 and then fire one of these homing bullets. I'm going to have the movement inside the homing bullet itself, so I don't need to worry about that. I just need to create it here. So I'm going to have him create his homing at X and Y. The homing bullet itself is over here. When he's created, he's going to do movement. Now, eventually I'm going to have my plane turn into an explosion when it gets hit. When that happens, if there are any homing bullets that get created, they're going to throw an error because my plane won't exist. That's a problem. So I need to make sure that the plane exists before this guy goes chasing after it. Under the control tab, what I'm going to do is use this test instance count, the blue one, two, three, and make sure my plane there's one of them in the room. Make sure that the number of my planes is equal to 1. Because if it's not, that's a problem. If there is a my plane, I want this guy to move towards it. There should only be one my plane, so I can use its name. This is much like the catch game. So I'm going to set it to go after the x and y of my plane, maybe a speed of 10 again. Now, if there is no plane in the room, I don't want it to just sit there, so I'm going to have it go down the screen. So if my plane is in the middle of an explosion or whatever it is, I'm just going to have it move down the screen at a speed of 10. Let me throw a couple of these enemy twos in the room. All right. And I can dodge out of the way. So they could move towards me initially, but not after that. Oh, they're firing at me from off screen. That's a problem. Once again, with this bullet, other outside view, destroy self. Okay, 
Those are the main things I wanted to cover for today. There's one other thing that I'd like to do, which is to show you how to get sprites to rotate. So that's a pretty common request on this. There's two ways to do it. One way requires the Pro version of GameMaker, and the other version can be done with the Lite version. So I'll show you both ways. Let me create a quick path, which is just a loop. So something like that. And I'm going to create two sprites. The first one, let's see, I'll grab maybe this white plane. Notice I'm grabbing the one to the right, not the one facing down. That's important. The reason why is that zero degrees is to the right, and I'm going to do everything based on zero degrees. So if I erase that color out, let's call this Rotate Pro Sprite. So this guy is going to be the version that's the Pro, and I'll create another Sprite. Rotate light sprite. And this bright green one will be the other one. Erase a color and center it. Going to create rotate pro object. It has this sprite, and I'll go ahead and do this guy to start with. So the first thing this guy needs to do is he's going to follow the loop path from wherever he's at. So when he's created, I set him to follow the loop path. It'll be a speed of 3. At the end, he's going to continue from here, relative. Notice that it's the create event I set paths. A lot of people put it in a step event, which will cause you problems. However, what this guy does need to do is he needs to change his image angle based on which direction he's going. So as he's following a path around in a loop, he's actually constantly changing his direction, and GameMaker's keeping track of that. So what I'm going to do is, in a step event, under main one, there's this middle icon, transform sprite. And what I'm going to do is this angle here, I'm actually going to set that angle to be whatever my direction is. What this will do is it'll actually rotate the sprite based on whichever direction I'm going. The reason I want the sprite to the right to begin with is if I have zero degrees, I want to rotate the sprite zero. I don't want it to rotate at all, so it'll go to the right. If he's going up, I want it to rotate 90 degrees, and my direction will be 90 if I'm going up. And so on and so forth. So if I throw that guy in the room, Looks like that. Kind of cool. I believe that only works with the Pro Edition, though. Um, if you have the light version, so you're working at home, there's another way to do it, which is a little bit different and not quite as smooth, but it'll work. What we're going to do is we're going to take this sprite here and actually create a whole bunch of sub-images of it. So I'm going to go into Edit Sprite. I'm going to create a cycle of animations here. So animation, rotation sequence, and I want to go counterclockwise. So maybe every 10 degrees or so, I'll do this. So let me do 36 frames, each of which will be 10 degrees. There we go. So this shows all the various rotations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out a particular frame based on what my direction is. And what I'm going to do is take my direction and just divide by 10. So for example, if I'm going up, 90 divided by 10 gives me 9. Hey, look, image 9 is going up. 180, which is left, divided by 10 is 18. And that's the image I've got here. And that's why I set it up this way, so that I just divide by 10 and give it, get exactly that image. And that's the rotation I want. So if I create an object, which is this light rotation, as that sprite, he's also going to follow a path when he's created. 
So I'm going to put him on the loop. Speed of 3 at the end. Continue from here. Relative. His step event is going to be slightly different. What he's going to do is he's actually going to make it so that he's using this rotation light. He's actually not going to animate. Otherwise, he would go in a continuous cycle, which would look silly. So I'm actually going to set his speed to 0. But I'm going to pick out which of those frames I want, which of the sub-images, by doing direction divided by 10. And it'll actually pick out which frame I'm at. Every step, it'll set it to be that particular frame. So if I throw him in the room, so it's a touch more jerky, but it allows you to do full rotations. And if you do more degrees, so if you do something like 360 different frames, it makes it a much, much, much bigger sprite, but you can also have smoother movement. All right, so we've got my bullets interact with the enemy one, creates explosions. Enemy two fires homing bullets and some ways to do rotations. I think that's all I'm going to go over for today. Um, next time we'll start taking a look at multiple hits and the boss.